an essential wilderness survival kit. What are the 10 things you need? I'm gonna show you the very basic option first, and then I'm gonna show you some more advanced options if you wanna make your kit a little bit bigger. Now this is not a hiking kit that I'm talking about. If you're going backpacking for a couple of days, you would have your tent and your food rations and your water rations. What I'm talking about here are the essentials. What would you need to survive in the wilderness? I have all of these things with me now because I've run into a few situations where it's made it very apparent why I would need it. I flipped a sailboat in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and had to survive at sea. A signal there would have been very useful. I flipped a car in the middle of nowhere and realized that a flashlight would have been really handy and some really warm clothes. And I cycled across the desert whereby I found water was really important. The kit I'm about to show you today could sit by your back door, you could put it in your car, or you could trim it down to the 10 essentials and bring with you every time you go into the wilderness. Now. Let's first remember that all of these are based on the basics, the rule of threes. How long can you survive in the wilderness at certain times? I made a video about that right here. Now you can survive three hours without warmth, so we need to talk about shelter. You can survive three days without water, and you can survive three weeks without food. Okay, let's start with number one. Blades. One of the first things you need to have in the wilderness is some sort of blade. Whether that's to free yourself from entanglement, free diving, or kayaking, or you need to be able to cut some wood to make something, having a blade is really handy. You can start small, that's why I start with this small Eldris from Mora Kenive. For an advanced kit, I would suggest getting a full tang knife, maybe a bushcraft one like this Garberg. You could also bring a small hatchet or a handsaw. Yep. And don't forget, knife basics video right here. Shelter. Now it's extremely important to stay warm in emergency situations. So if you have to spend the night in the woods, having some sort of say emergency tent, something like this, really, really valuable. Um, this thing will set up, it's just a little tube that you fit inside. Uh, it could also be an emergency blanket. They're about a similar size. Uh, one step up from that would just be a tarp, something to cover yourself up with. Maybe a little footprint or hammock could also go in the kit, but essentially just something that's waterproof that you can sleep in overnight. Fire. You need to know how to start a fire out in the wilderness. I have a full video on that, which you can check out up here. But for being in a basic wilderness survival situation, I would say bringing some matches with you, preferably waterproof matches, is ideal. Now, uh, I would also suggest knowing how to use a small uh, ferro rod on your knife or maybe a magnesium fire starter kit like this. I like to bring with me survival matches, which these things, like it would be really hard not to light one and then you stick it in the fire and it'll last for a long time. I also bring with me a little bit of tinder. One thing you can do is throw in a little Ziploc bag some of the lint from your dryer. Uh, one step up from that, I think, is taking some cotton balls and adding some Vaseline to them, just throwing them all in a waterproof bag like this. Almost every survivalist will have one of these with them. And the reason you'd bring this is the fire lasts forever once you've gotten it lit. Cordage. Now this survival cord is not only good to set up your tent, string things together, maybe tie some branches together uh, to make a tent, but inside of this paracord, you have some monofilament lines, so you could fish with it. You have some metal line, some jute, which could be used for fire starting. And then you have seven braided nylon strands, which are used for strength. Water, you can only survive three days without water, remember, so you gotta be thinking a lot about how to do that. I have a full video here, but essentially you need a container and a way to filter your drinking water. This bottle from Grail does both, water filter and container. That's a little fancy. If you just had a Nalgene bottle, you could put water in there. You could put some iodine pills inside of it to treat the water, or uh, as an advanced thing, I bring this entire water filtration kit, which includes a life straw. It also includes this filtration kit from Sawyer, which I quite like. I have a SteriPin inside, and I have chemical treatment, which is my iodine pills and neutralizer. No matter what it is, make sure you're thinking about how you're gonna treat your water. Light. Now I will tell you that some sort of light source will make the nights much less scary. Let's see if we can find some wolves. I always suggest bringing with you a headlamp. I put this in every bag that I bring with me. But a couple other options might be a chemical light that you can break and use that for light. Uh, this is a candle light, so you can open this thing up and there's a little candle that burns inside, really handy. Or just as another lantern option, this one has batteries and you can have it small in your bag or extend it and you have a little bit of a light. But either way, you don't wanna have 12 hours of pure darkness in a survival situation because 
more than anything, it's really scary. Signaling. Now I have a whole video on signaling coming out in the future, which will be right here. But just as the basics, you need some way of getting somebody's attention. Now this is a survival technique in that you don't wanna be out there by yourself. So I like to bring just something very simple, a whistle. Everyone should have a whistle because it's the best way to get somebody's attention. Now the next step, which is not in every bag I carry, would be some sort of signal flares, or you could have a signaling mirror, you could have a beacon, I bring that on sailboats. Point is, you need a signaling device in your survival kit. Now first aid kit. The first aid kit is there to protect yourself from bad cuts that need to be treated right away. Most first aid kits will have some bandages, some alcohol swabs, some aspirin, say. Uh, more advanced ones will have some needles for sewing things together. Uh, this one is kind of handy, it has paracord already on it, has a compass with it. Either way, you got to think about your health. The last thing is a bag. Now it's almost a no-brainer, but you want a good quality bag that you can put all of the kit into. Now this bag from Dracon is my favorite because not only is it waterproof, because you can seal it, and it's like you could dunk it in a river, it would be completely fine, but it has all of these places to attach smaller bags to. So if I want to put, say, my water kit on one side or my fire making kit on another, I can have them with easy access. So that's really handy. So that's what I would consider the basics of an outdoor survival bag. You could beef this up to make it a bug out bag. You can put it next to your back door. Now I'm not a prepper, but I do put it next to my back door should something happen. I also put it in my car in case I'm going off grid out into the woods. I flip and I've got to deal with things as they happen to me. And recently we've had a few things where this could have come in handy. Hurricanes passed through. We were out of power and water for a few days. The winds from this hurricane coming in and it is... Oh sh Oh, it is coming down right at the moment. Uh, freezing temperatures like what happened in Texas, they were out of water, they had to start fires. A bag like this would be really handy. Finally, if you're gonna trim this down to the basics of a blade, a fire starter, tinder, water bottle and filtration, first aid, cordage, whistle, shelter, and a light, it fits in a very small bag, you can bring this with you anywhere. And might I remind you, another thing to add to the kit, mother nature is not trying to kill you. <laughs> shameless self-promotion of our new book. Actually, this is all continued education for the book. Uh, we have an eight-part series coming out, which you can check out up here. I'm putting links to all of these videos. Stay tuned as they come out week to week. A big thanks to my patrons who are not only getting these videos just a little bit earlier. We're doing other things like interviewing survival experts, learning about the plants and animals in the woods. Wow, what? An amazing animal. Uh, you also get discounts on this book, which I will sign and send to you. So just a way to help support the work that I'm doing, because I really appreciate it. We're trying to make all of this work and make sure people can get out and explore the woods. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.